Yo, what's going on everybody? Good to see you and welcome back to the Potato Boat YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna be knocking out my top 25 tips for players who are enjoying the forest. These aren't necessarily beginner tips. These aren't necessarily pro tips. They're just little things throughout my playthrough that I thought would be enjoyable for you guys to know. So before we get started, please make sure to scroll down, click subscribe, like the video, and also hit that bell for make sure you don't miss any videos at all. Also, we do love some comments. So uh, if you have any tips you would like to add to this video, make sure you throw those down below in the comment section below and let's help some people out. Also, make sure you stick around to the end of the video for a super secret bonus tip. So this is technically actually like a 26 tips, but without further ado, let's get into our tips for playing the forest. So tip number one is going to be make more benches. That's right, benches are completely underrated in this game. They allow you to not only regenerate your current stamina faster, but it also regenerates your overall stamina. So a quick minute sitting on the bench and you are topped back out without having to drink anything or eat anything. And they're just completely underrated. Tip number two are spears are your best friend. Spears are super easy to make. Two sticks makes a basic spear a little bit more and you can have yourself an upgraded spear. But not only do they help stagger enemies and keep them at bay, they're good for hunting. And the throwing damage is insanely good. For two sticks, you can get insane throwing damage. So if you're early game or late game, it doesn't matter. Make sure to keep some spears on you. Tip number three is that most weapons in the game can be upgraded. Now, not all of them, but many of the weapons in the game you can add teeth to, you can add feathers to, you can add different items to them, and that will allow you to do either more damage, to swing faster, better block, that kind of stuff like that. So if your weapon that you like to use isn't giving you exactly what you want, check out the upgrades by adding it to the bench and hovering over the gear and seeing what kind of upgrades you can add to the weapon of your choice. Tip number four is really good for the early game. If you feel like you're running low on supplies, make sure you check inside the plane. Inside the plane has medicine, has food that you can eat, has different alcohols that you can either have for health reasons or you can make Molotovs out of them. There's plenty of items in the plane. So if you're running low on items, take a peek in the plane. Tip number five is make more pouches. You can use different skins from different animals to make different pouches in the game where you can carry more rocks, more sticks, more spears, berries, water skins, stuff like that. So make sure you're hunting all the little critters. Slingshots are great for this and make sure you take those skins and make at least like the upgraded spear bag and stick bag and rock bag for when you're building stuff and to have more defenses on you. All right, number six is sleds are multi-purpose. You can build a sled out of a lot of sticks and a lot of people use them to haul logs back and forth when they're building homes, but you can also fill these up with rocks. You can fill these up with sticks. You can put dead bodies in this. If, depending on what you need, the sleds may carry those from place to place for you. So I recommend building sleds if you're building your home anyway, but also remember they're multi-purpose and can be used for a lot of reasons. Tip number seven is super situational, but I will say it's super fun. Tip number seven is you can slide down hills on turtle shells and take reduced or no falling damage. It doesn't always work super well. You have to jump, then pull the turtle shell under you and go, but it will save you from the fall damage and has saved my life more than once. Also for tip number eight, did you know that you can get to the end game area super easy after getting the rebreather? All you have to do is place a zip line on either side of the crater, one at the very top lip and the other side at the lowest lip. And once you get that in place, you can actually ride the zip line halfway across the crater and let go, fall into the lake in the middle of the hole. And actually within that lake that you fall into, if you dive down in it, you have to have the rebreather, but that will actually take you to the end game area. So if you feel like you've got enough stuff and you have no more exploring to do, and you don't want to try to use the cave systems to find your way down, try this out. It's super fun. Also, if you have vertigo, warning, feel it, falling feels super weird. Now, tip number nine is more for our new players, but 
Blueberries are a great source of food and water. You do need to walk up to the bush and make sure they are blue berries, not the red or white or other berries, but blueberries are great. And when you eat them, and if you destroy the plant, you can actually get the seeds for them and make a planter back at your base. I highly recommend it. Cheap, easy food uh, and water. So it's, it's a great little survival tool, especially if you're pretty new at the game and you don't wanna do all the hunting and fishing kind of stuff. To kind of compound with that, tip number 10 is avoid eating all the other berries. All the other berries will cause you to lose health, make you sick. Uh, they don't benefit you at all. If you eat a berry and there's a weird like crunch sound and all of a sudden your character goes or just makes a gross noise in general, that means you ate the wrong berry. Blueberries only, people. Now on the subject of hunting, do you find yourself needing some more rocks to shoot out of your slingshot? Then tip number 11 is for you simply poking the ground with a plain old run of the mill stick can net you coins and it can net you rocks that you can use to populate your slingshot with some good ammo and keep your resources high for hunting. So I recommend giving that a try. Now tip number 12 is for multiplayer. Are you playing with your friends on this run? If so, did you know that you can trade items with each other? If you grab the metal tin tray from the plane when you were first there, you can actually take that and combine it with most any item in your inventory, and it will put that item on the tray in your hand and your friends can come up and grab it. And voila, you have the forest's trading mechanic down. Now, tip number 13 is another beginner tip. Do you find yourself wanting cannibals to leave you alone? Well, other than maybe not killing them, because that makes them angry. You can actually put on some red paint, which you can find very easily in the main cannibal village. You can put on that red paint and it will actually cause cannibals to ignore you or worship you or bow down or keep their distance, but it should give you a little bit of leeway with them not attacking you. Now, word of warning, this will wash off if you walk through water or anything like that, so be warned. And speaking of water, tip number 14 is that cannibals cannot swim. So if you find a deep enough water that they can't wade into, they will either not move into it to come after you or they will drown as we saw in our playthrough. So building in or around by water is always a good choice. Tip 15 lets you know that early game, one of the best defenses you can have around cannibals attacking you is just don't attack them. Stay out of their line of sight, stay out of their way, don't attack them, and it won't stay peaceful forever, but it will delay them coming after you and because the more that you attack, the more you will be attacked. So keep that in mind before you get bloodthirsty. But if you are bloodthirsty, tip number 16 is for you because if you find yourself on massive, massive murder sprees on waves of cannibals, don't let them go to waste. You can take dead cannibal bodies and throw them onto fires, any of the fires you can build out of your book, and you can burn down their bodies into bones. Now, this is important because you can use those bones to make some very, very sturdy armor when combining X amount of bones with some cloth. So don't neglect it. Don't waste it. If you're going to be fighting that much anyway, make sure you burn the bodies, get the bones and make the armor. A bonus tip on this one is make sure that you build yourself some bone baskets by the fire you're burning bodies because then you can contain all those. And then if you start running out of pieces of armor that get knocked off, you have reserves to build back up a good armor set. On a good bone farm, we're gonna talk on tip number 17, is if you wanna make your own little bone farm, make sure you line your base with traps and defenses. Most of the traps, especially like the deadfall trap, are going to one shot a lot of the cannibals and they are do it for free. It, it makes an easier way for you to kite around and kill a bunch of people if you get mobbed around your base. And you can take all of those bodies that will happen for free and throw them on your fire. Sometimes they'll come by when you're not even around and trigger your traps. So make sure you don't let those go to waste. Build traps around your base if you wanna to continue to farm bones passively. When it comes to which traps to use, I highly recommend the deadfall trap and the happy birthday trap. Easy to make, one stick to reset, high kill potential, and they're super fun. So make your traps. Tip number 18 compounds on everything we've just been talking about here. So you've made your bone boxes, you've made a bunch of armor, you've got reserve sets, you got traps. What else can you do? Well, with those traps, if you find yourself still with a bunch of excess cannibals laying around you, you can hack them up and make effigies and effigies cannot be destroyed by cannibals or mutants. And 
they provide a chance for mutants or cannibals to be kind of scared away from your base so it's really useful to build these if you find yourself wanting to keep things away from your base or a certain area you can pop up effigies and since you know you're obviously a bloodthirsty monster if you've been following the last few tips this should not be a difficult task for you to achieve moving right along to tip number 19 pick up everything inventory is controlled by quantity not by weight in the forest so make sure you have as much of every item as you can on you at all times it makes you a lot of pinch situations much easier now for tip number 20 it's for my builders and new people make sure when you're chopping trees try to chop in a circle around the tree as you hit the tree there will be divots instead of continuing to wail on that one divot move in a circle around the tree and you should be able to make it fall much quicker and it'll be much easier than just standing there and hoping it will fall now for tip 21 as you're chopping those trees and you're building that base i highly recommend build your base near a pond not super close to it that way it doesn't mess with the spawns but somewhere in a close walking distance you can use the ponds to wash dirt off of you wash mud off of you wash blood off of you wash the red paint off of you but you can also fish there and it respawns those fish with a spear and it's really easy so it's easy food easy cleaning and just as overall convenience so make sure when you're looking for a place to settle down look for a pond you can use now tip 22 once you get all of your food secured and you feel like you're carrying around a bunch of stuff you'll notice it spoils way too easy and way too quickly so i highly recommend making drying racks wherever you decide to set up camp you can actually take the food from your inventory and put it on the drying racks and instead of spoiling it'll sit there and wait for you and you'll get more bang for your buck so make sure you build plenty of drying racks to keep all of your meat on now tip number 23 i highly recommend opening luggage and cases that you find around the map they are always going to contain useful items for you to use such thing as like medicine food items like tape uh electronics clothes it, multiple items in the game appear inside of these luggage cases and they're going to help you along your journey just the food and the medicine alone are well worth checking into these cases there are also special cases that hold dynamite that hold soda that hold flares so if you see a box and you're not sure if it opens or not whack it with a stick whack it with your axe whatever and see if it opens up and get yourself some free goodies for tip number 24 did you know that you can use the tents that are placed around the map from previous campers as save points that way if you do happen to die you can reload pretty close to the area of incident these are found in many areas on the beaches and in the woods and in the mountains and they are a great little halfway point that way if things go sideways you know you can fall back on that save point and finally tip number 25 if you are going to sleep through the night make sure you are ready but do not eat or drink before you go to sleep every time you wake up you are going to wake up basically dehydrated and starving and so no matter what you eat before you go to sleep you are going to basically lose it all when you wake up so make sure you've got some form of food and water handy for when you wake up and go ahead and go to sleep and then when you get up have your food have your water and you are ready for the day starting out with best stats possible and those are my 25 tips for those of you that are venturing into the forest some of them are easy and beginner stuff and some of them are a little bit more advanced but i hope you enjoyed and as a special thank you for staying this far into the video we do indeed have a bonus tip for you and that bonus tip is have you found an entrance to a cave or found a cannibal village or you found a landmark that you want to come back to later maybe you don't have the stuff on you that you want to have or you have some other things you want to do first my recommendation is to use these markers that you can find in the book and build them they're super easy just some sticks and some rocks and place them near those cave entrances or in those important locations me personally i turn them red i put them right near cave openings and i kind of map out each of the play the cave places and have them marked in red i also sometimes will forego the markers and build this super easy hunting shelter the really basic one that way that i have a place to rest and to sleep and to save before i go venturing into something that could end up not going my way but it's a great way to keep a good visual representation on the map of where stuff is and what you want to get back to and you can use all kinds of colors and all kinds of markings however you see fit it's just something that personally worked for me 
And that is all of my tips for today. Again, thank you so much for making it this far into the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button to see more awesome content like this and also leave a thumbs up. It means a lot to us. If you have any tips you would like to share yourself, put those down in the comments below. Or if I mess something up, put that down there as well because I, I want to know. Uh, if you think this will help somebody else out, man, please share the video with your friends. But that's going to be it for us today. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the next video.